So my thing is, is I think you need to stretch that label. Constantly show other facets or improvements in your game, which right now, every time you step on the ice, it's a commercial. It's your commercial. And you have to be very careful about the difference between your role and your label. You have to play your role. And you want to continue to stretch that label. What determines your role? Obviously, it's coaching decision based on how the coach is going to manage his assets. And what, what else is relative to what he has available to him? So if you were on the top team in the league, your role might be significantly different than if you were on even a lower level team. All of a sudden, they got, you got a puck handling defenseman who's a quarterback for the power play, and he's now hurt. Now we need a new guy. So who's that? All of a sudden, they pin the tail on you, and so now your role has now changed instantly. So you have to be able to prepare yourself, both mentally and from a skill perspective, to be able to handle multiple roles and continue to stretch that label. Your value ultimately is based on your versatility. So how many roles can you play? How many situations can you play in? What is a label? Your label is a descriptive phrase used by scouts, managers, coaches, right? They want to be able to provide a two, three word thing that describes you completely. Can someone give me an example of what that is? Power forward. As soon as you say power forward, there's certain images come up in your mind, right? of what that guy could or should do. But those labels can stick. And you can start to buy into it. You can start to believe, oh, that's what I am. I'm going to shut down deep. That's what I am. Perfect. No, it's not perfect. Because your role is going to have to change all the time, depending on the situation. Every team you go to, you need to have a guy sitting around the table advocating that you can be more than what your role is on the team you're playing on. You buy into your label, and that's all that you produce, then that's, it limits you going forward. Remember, your value is based on your versatility. Here's some rules. Here's a ghost roster. What does this represent right now for this year coming up in the National Hockey League? It's a template for success. What do you see about these guys? Well, four out of six are known first for their offensive ability. You first think of Lidstrom, you think, wow, this guy's smooth as silk, makes great first passes. Same with Kowalski, Stewart as well. Lebda is another guy. These guys are well known for their puck handling ability. And now I think through the playoffs, you'll see that this Cronwall guy has gotten a lot of respect for the way he handles the puck. So now you got four or five guys. The only guy who really isn't a guy who you would think has a quality puck handling skill, our top end quality puck handling skill, will be Lilia. Even Chelios. Chelios excels in transition. So, six out of seven D are dominant with puck. Very good with puck. And this is where we're going now. This is what I mean about your label. Be careful of how you're developing yourself. So, these are your common labels. You ever hear this? Oh, a guy plays like Gancha. He reminds me of Gancha. Reminds me of this guy. Reminds me of that guy. That's a one word label. As soon as you say what that guy's name is, it brings out images in your head about what that type of player is. I'm going to talk to you about role lineage. This is really important. Lineage it means chart, okay? progressive chart. Well, first role, the role there is a depth role. This is the guy who's like seventh defenseman, plays very low minutes. Low game's kind of a bit part, right? He's shifting in and out of the lineup. When he does get in, he's looking at five, six minutes. So now you got an even strength role. So this is your fifth, sixth D. Plays like regular minutes, but only even strength. He's not in any situations at all. So what's the difference between a depth guy and an even, step, an even strength guy? Well, probably the guy has low turnovers. Plays pretty good one-on-one. -on -one. He's rarely reliable. There's a level of trust there, or a greater level of trust. And he makes easy outs. So the difference between seven and six is trust. I, as a coach, have a level, a higher level of trust in putting him out than, as a sixth guy than seven. So if I'm seven and I want to be six, what do I have to do? Improve my level of trust 
than the coach. So I got to try not to do more. I actually got to try to do less. Make easy outs. Keep it simple. Play it solid one-on-one. Now you move up to the next spot. Now there's a fifth, sixth D. But he's also maybe a penalty killing guy. So he's, he's got to weasel himself into a second unit PK. Well, how did you do that? All of a sudden, this guy, when he gets his chance, he's tenacious. He's blocking shots. He's got an active stick. He's never out of position. So now I can trust him in a PK role now. You see where I'm going with this? I'm gradually stretching things out for it. I'm shifting. I'm trying to shift. I'm trying to sneak into that top four. How do I get into that top four? What's the difference? Well, this is the difference right here. Low panic. I'm not rushing out of position. I'm okay. I've got a low panic threshold. I'm not going to force anything. It creates a higher level of trust. And we move along. Oh, we give this guy a few more minutes. He's better. We give him, you know, we, we take him from 10 minutes or 12 minutes of a game. We bump him up to 15. He's better with more minutes. He's more in the game. Finally, you become an all situation player. Trusted in all minutes, anytime I can put you out there. I feel a great level of comfort. Your Lidstrom type player, or your top end, your number one D, is this guy right here. Top minute defenseman, and he's the face of the defense. When you think of the, when you think of the team, the first face that you think of, that's that guy. This type of idea can be used as a development chart. It's a way of utilizing the role that you're in and understanding, here's the role, but this is the next part of the role. Or this is how I, this is where my area of opportunity is. You try to expand the trust of the coach to put you into another situation. There's opportunity all the time. There's certain games where there's coaches at liberty to stretch out the minutes for some guys. You're playing three games in three nights, you can't play a guy 35 or 40 minutes for all three of those. That's opportunity. Seize the opportunity. You gotta know the rules on your team. Who's on your team specifically? What are the rules? Who played what? Just take your team from last year and think about it. What was the depth chart? I wanna talk about this last part right here. Every shift is a commercial. Your own personal commercial. You have no idea who the hell is watching you that night. Who's going to say, you know what? He would fit perfectly in our, in our situation. It's not necessarily the guy behind you or the GM of the team that you're on that's going to create the opportunities for you. It could be any number of guys at any point who are going to advocate for you in a meeting. You know, we need a puck handling defenseman. We need to increase our depth in our system for a puck handling defenseman. Who do we know? Who have you seen? Oh, I've seen a guy. He plays a limited role or an average role or an underappreciated role on this team. Coburn. Coburn in Nashville. In and out of the lineup. Nashville's got a really good defense. They don't really have any room for him at the time. So all of a sudden, at the deadline, they make a move. Now, Philadelphia is totally different. Their depth chart at the time when Coburn got moved over was totally different. They need a guy like him. Now, all of a sudden, bang, one year later, he goes from playing in Milwaukee to play in the top pairing with Timonen in the playoffs. Just like that. Opportunity seize. So I wanted to leave with you that it's really important that you seize whatever opportunities are afforded to you and know that you're playing for this 45 second commercial. You're building a personal brand for yourself. Just think about this past year that was an opportunity given to you based on circumstance. All of a sudden, a, a, the D ahead of you, he's in the box for 10 minutes. Or he's getting stitches, so he's out for half a period. All of a sudden, there's extra minutes for you. What did you do during that time to capitalize on that opportunity? Did you play your role, stretch your label.